Hey, Mr. Wonderburn here. Why am I standing outside of a Richard Mille store? I wonder if I'm picking up my first Richard Mille ever. I haven't bought this brand yet. I haven't collected it yet because I had a lot of problems with the size of the watches, but maybe they've got something for me in there that solves this problem and gets me on the RM trade. Watch this. Hey, Mr. Wonderful here. I'm in a very special place. Um, this is Richard Mill. Now, I haven't collected Mill, not one watch yet. And the reason is that they're beautiful pieces, but for lack of any better words, and this is specifically for Shark Tank, they steal the show. You know what that means? Where the shot, where the director says, what is that on your wrist? That's too big. It's too explosive. Bring it down a notch. And for years, I kept showing them ideas because I wanted to add meal to the collection, as I like to call it, until you and I met, right? And while it was in Japan a few months ago, um, a friend of mine showed me a mill that was made of titanium, thin and subtle and beautiful. Just, and I immediately took a picture on his wrist, sent it to wardrobe and said, hey, would this work on Shark Kick? And I said, we love it. Get one of those. And today, am I getting one of these? Yes, you're getting one of those. Let's start with looking at um, a traditional mill in something that they wouldn't let me wear. Okay. So, first of all, we start with what the brand is. Yeah. So, okay. Richard Mill is a relatively new brand compared to the old horological industry. That's true. Horological industry starts back in the 1600s. Mr. Mill here. Yeah. He founded the brand in 1999. Right. First watch came out was the in 2001 was the RM001 Monster, which by then by those standards it was pretty it was it's pretty big pretty thick. Yep. But also the technology behind the watch was very different back then. It was all made in titanium. Well, I remember when it came on the scene, a lot of people were talking about it. It had a Frank Mueller vibe to it, say a curve. A lot of people said that. Um, it hadn't exploded into popular culture yet with sports stars, which was another direction you guys went. Yeah. And so you really picked up some momentum with the whole tennis thing. Yeah, for sure. So and back then when Rambo would come up. In my collector community, that's when I first started hearing about, so have you heard about Mill? Do you have a Mill? You know, they're going into some really crazy dials, which everybody knows I'm a dial guy. And I said, yeah, but can I, A, can I get a red band for TV and B, can I wear it on TV? Because my attitude is, if I can pull something out of the collection, I gotta be able to wear it. And I want a really crazy dial. So these early pieces were big, yeah. big, big watches. Yeah, and and then going back to whether the familiar vibes and everything, you have to understand these are shapes in traditional horology. Most of the watches, they're round. Yeah. Right? Because the movement, the engines, they're round. But this is called a tunnel shape. French for barrel shape. Uh, Cartier has it. Uh, so the could has it, Richard Mille, Frank Mueller, right. Blow, they all share it. At that moment, Frank Mueller was at, at its hype. It was the most popular brand. What year was this? Would you... We're looking around early to 2000s, 2001. This watch came out in 2001, but then Frank Mueller exploded around 2003, 2004. And from there, you're going to start seeing how everything derived. This first truly be on movement, and Richard Mille, ARM001, you have Split second. That was the first turbine. This is this is well, the 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 base or let's say the essence of Richard Mille are turbine movements. Yeah. Most of in the collection we also have automatic or manual one movements, non turbine. But the base, like what defines Richard Mille, are turbine movements. I just want to make a point here. People ask me all the time, why do you need a resale store anymore for the watch industry? What we're doing right now tells you why. This is actually the client's den, if you want to call it that. I'm having a little espresso. We're going through the whole, you know, chance to get in the mood and in the zone of receiving a new piece, which is always very special. And it, it, it's a chance for us to discuss the background on these pieces. And it's very important in the watch industry. Wherever I go anywhere in the world, you can find rooms like this that cost a fortune to make. Even though it's very hard to get these pieces, the experience makes it worth it. Now, if I was just going to get this in a FedEx envelope, that would suck. I would rather go through this experience. I don't want it delivered to my house in a box. I want to live and inhale the experience of that watch. 
and really enjoy receiving it. That's exactly what we're doing now. And I'll try my best. Yeah. So okay. As time goes by, more watches are designed. This is the Arm 005, first yeah. automatic one. Right. Remember that? Yeah, and this one actually was special. It was our, one of the first uh, ambassadors, Felipe Maza. It's when you started introducing some pretty brash colors into the dial. Yeah. That was when it really started to get interesting, and that was the buzz started to increase. Hip hop culture embraced this big time. I mean, I saw it in a lot of stars' hands, and yet still for me, too big, couldn't wear it. You know, I got a tough crowd in the television world that just don't want when you're, you're holding up your arm to steal the show yeah we've been at it for years until trying to find the perfect one. no and you're right you've done it you've done it that's great look some other emblematic these are square which a lot of people don't know and uh, yeah they return kind of a farche vibe in that yeah exactly yeah. so again those are shapes that already existed in the watch industry yeah very important watch rm 017 to be on square and then from there you're going to start jumping Oh, I remember some of these really yeah. interesting dials. The crazy stuff started showing up. This is very important watch alternative. These have become very collectible. Yeah, very. Today, it, yeah. it's a hot. Item. That's when you start getting aftermarket appreciation. The big question with Mill at the beginning was, what is old value in the secondary market? And for a while, it was a little shaky. That's not the problem today. Yeah, there's more brown awareness also. Big time. You're more exposed to the brand, and other people know about it, so more people want it. Problem is that production doesn't increase that much. But that's always going to be the problem. I mean, people want what they can't get. That is the nature of the watch industry. It's the weirdest dynamic ever. You know, that's what happens. And, and you know what? A lot of people get me, they criticize me like, okay, so why don't you make more watches? And the answer is, it's just impossible. It's very difficult. Well, I know the titanium we're looking at today, very hard to manufacture. It's very difficult. You know, one, one difficult part of that watch manufacturer is not the movement itself, it's the casing. In fact, the back sapphire, milling sapphire to make it so thin that it fits in the watch it's yeah. very very difficult and the production rate the production the rejection in production is extremely high so maybe a number 20 watches are planned to be made maybe four or five come out yeah that, i get it that, i get that, it that's, that's it's been a problem for a lot of makers fp jordan had that problem with a lot of his early dials this is where we start getting some very interesting complications on these pieces yeah now you start seeing tourbillon so uh, an right. example this is the rm 21 yeah came out in titanium first this the base plate is designed from uh inspiration from aerodynamics and yeah this in airplane this watch appreciated almost 30 percent right out of the gate they have a lot yeah you don't find them anymore actually and we just unveiled a new one on a new edition of 22001 i'll show it to you came out in a, a combination black carbon white carbon and titanium yeah so as you see, these are now we go into the what the 2701, yeah. the 027, 2701, which are the Rafa. That's when Rafa came part. Of, it came part of their arm. I consider this when you you actually crescendoed when that that deal happened, which was really a deal on your behalf, and yeah. the whole idea that it could take the tremendous stress that tennis put a watch under and it could still hold time, and the caliber would remain intact. That was such a hell of a story. And I got, I got a hand to it. There's that, many stories. There's an, an engineer story that they gave the watch to Rafa. Okay, here's your new watch. Go test it. No problem. And he goes, plays, plays with it. And then he comes back. Here's your watch. What happened? I don't know. I was going out. Moving and the watch fell. Well, yeah, no problem. Put it back together. Here. Try it again. And they did that. They did that. They did that. Until the watch was well, the G-forces of a Rafa slam must have been... Incredible. And that's the design behind it. Yeah. Well, I think I think that's absolutely brilliant to do it that way. And then once the word got out that he could play tennis with it on, although I think he put it on his left wrist in the tournament. Yeah, yeah. And also another uh, another thing is that there are not many watches in the watch industry designed for this. Really? You're gonna see other not not naming names, but you're gonna see other players that go for other big brands. They play with the watches. They play without the watches, and then when the picture comes up, they put the watch. Right. This guy, you know, he put wears it during the whole thing. It's fantastic. Yeah. So as we all progress, yeah. you know, also we got round. This is a very important watch also in the collection, RM028. Yeah, it's a little unusual. People that want to buy their first or second meal want the meal look. Yeah. You know, the, the round is... Look at the fine. That's a, that's when you see a watch, you say, okay, that's a Richard Mill. Yeah. But people are not so... so they, they will not recognize this piece yeah. as a Richard Mill. I've seen this piece. Yeah. It's not easy. You have to look at it and say, what is that? And then you realize Mill went off piste, so to speak. And did you know that a round piece is the one that Mr. Mill wears personally? I'm sure he is. The only one. Well, yeah, they, I get it. I get it. That, that he wears. Fast forward to today. Actually, 
the RM6701, which is today's hero. <laughs> Manuel, that is the watch I'm getting. That's the watch you And there's a reason for that. It is so beautiful in terms of the dial and subtle and blends into the whole shtick that I have for Shark Tank, which is that black suit, white shirt, crisp look. This marries perfectly. Of course, it's going to have a red band, I assume. Yes, it does. Absolutely. All right. Let's have a look at it. Well, Bring it. Important note about this watch. You mentioned the dial. It does not have a dial. Well, it's a skeleton, right? That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. And that's the beauty. Most, most, most of the watches, unless they are traditional. Yeah. Um, no, but the way the skeleton is done, it's almost a floating uh, image. It's, it's beautiful. I mean, what I've noticed about this watch, because I saw it in person, the digital image does not do it justice. Never. It does not do it justice. Because we're going to see it now, and it, it's just a whole different experience. I keep saying that. I keep telling you that when you see this renderings, trust me, when you have the watch on the wrist, it's a totally complete, totally different experience. Yeah, let's see it. Here we go. Ready? Exciting. It's always my favorite part. Bring out the piece. Roll the drums. They've been waiting a long time for this meal. It's taken a long time to get it. Um, on the other hand, you gotta wait for pieces. Anything worthwhile, you gotta wait. That's how it works. I will say one thing though, it's a very comfortable piece because when I was in Japan with the FPJ Society and these guys are hardcore collectors, we talk about all of our FPs, but we also have a lot of other pieces we travel with and a lot of people were showcasing their mills. I didn't have one, obviously, and we talked a lot about it, but when I saw I wore this one on my wrist, I said, this is the one for me. I'll start my journey into Richard Mill with this piece because it's going to work so well. And, you know, each year in Shark Tank, I try and find nine new pieces. There's nine different watches where I shoot Shark Tank. So, you know, each year my journey is the Shark Tank 9. Where am I going to find them? And this year I'm attempting to do everything new, everything new, every single piece will have never been on Shark Tank before. That's the challenge I'm starting right now. And so I've got basically six months to pull it off. I got a lot of watches coming, but they're all gonna be first time entrants into the tank. All right, this is the big reveal here. Drum roll. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. Isn't that beautiful? That's spectacular. Look at that. Of course, see, this 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 works so well with red. It's crazy. I mean, that's perfect. Also, this titanium is, is beautifully light and crisp. It's it's a different when you see it, and then the take that when you take the watch, it's you don't you don't expect it to be so light. Beautiful flywheel. Yeah. Very very interesting design on the flywheel. See that? Amazing. Remember what I told you, I mentioned you about the, the back sapphire to mail that sapphire? So that wheel, the movement is so thin that it actually comes out of the case into the space where the sapphire would be. You're kidding. So they have to extra mill the sapphire. And make room for it to spin. Yeah, and that is extremely difficult. Yeah, that's spectacular. Let's, uh, let me set it for you. Sure. So this comes with a butterfly class. Good. There's like a safety class. Let me see. I know I cannot guess. Tell me if it's too tight or not. Yeah, that's perfect. It's good. Good eye. Good eye. And must be an large business. Wow, that's beautiful. Absolutely stunning. Yeah. I mean, you can see from five yards away, it's a mill. Beautiful. Absolutely spectacular. Oh, that's nice. Thank you very much. My pleasure, boss. And you got it right on time. You said you'd get it in December. You got it. I try, meaning I try to keep uh, expectations, you know. Yeah, realistic, yeah. Well, I'm going to wear it. That's absolutely gorgeous. Okay, so setting the date and time. So the watch. Besides being full titanium, the crown, if you notice the crown, it has a function selector. As you open, as you turn around the... This is a very nice. Wow, that detail's incredible. Yeah. Wow. 
WDH. WDH stands for W winding, D date, and H hours. So as we manipulate the crown, you open and close the crown, it would shift into gears. Ray's numerals are beautiful. Yeah, it's nice so it's true. Really interesting. Fantastic. There's a power reserve here? No, it doesn't have that's the that's the little hand that indicates the the gear. Oh no crown it is. Yeah. So when you move the crown, if you notice it will it will jump into gear. I see. Is that a screw down crown? No. Okay. You open that I see, I see. So right now we're at hands. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. That that take twelve seventeen. So okay. Perfect. That's fantastic. Well, thank you very much. My pleasure. That's this great. always takes first. This side first. Hey, dog. And then, the and only with time, as you close it, you you learn that too. Beautiful. I didn't even make me too tight, but you tell me. No, it's funny. Thanks a lot. Well, that's my pleasure. Oh. Well, that's it. I've got my mill, and a new journey begins. Watch for this one on season 16 of Shark Tank. You can't miss it. And of course, it's got the red band. Thank you. You did a great job on this.